What's going on, everyone, and welcome back to the X Frontier. First and foremost, I hope you and your families are all doing wonderful. If you're new to the channel, welcome. Happy to have you here. Thanks for tuning in. Or if you've been following this channel for some time, much love. Thank you for your support. You are very much appreciated. Now, real quickly, just wanted to bring this giveaway to your attention from Forest Staking on X. For a chance at winning a PS5, I'll leave the link in the description down below to this if you're interested, or you can find the details on their X page. They started their validator with just 200,000 Casper a couple years ago and have organically grown to be one of the top validators by stake. So definitely check that out if you're interested. By the way, this is definitely not a sponsored or paid endorsement. I just think this is an awesome opportunity to win a PS5 and why not help out the community, right? Now in today's video, I wanted to give a refresher, an update, so to speak, on the Casper tokenomics for two reasons. Reason number one, there's still lots of new folks that are interested in looking into Casper and I believe a lot more eventually will, especially now with the successful release of Casper 1.5.2, which is actually set to launch tomorrow. So from this, this is a very huge milestone that will greatly improve the network for uh, those that are already building on Casper and definitely attract more developers and projects. But back to the tokenomics, this tends to be a topic that scares, maybe scare isn't the right word, but definitely turns away many new folks. And reason number two is, it doesn't make sense for me to refer someone to a video that I made 10 months ago to look at old data, as we all know that the numbers were considerably, considerably different back then. Plus, uh, hopefully in this video, I present you some questions for you to consider as you look over the data so that you can make an informed decision. But before we get into the content for today, I just want to thank you, God, for giving me the strength to get back up on my feet. Only you know the brokenness that I felt this last month, so much that I was ready to just quit creating content, quote, basically just quit a lot of things in my life. I had to dig deep to find my whys and really realign myself with my purpose. And I ask you to continue to help anyone that may be going through a storm in their life. May you provide them with the strength if they're too weak. Remind them that you can carry them. All they need to do is trust you because your love and compassion is infinite. Again, thank you for this bounce back. And it'd be cool too if you can get this market to bounce back. I ask all of this in your name, Jesus. Amen. Now let's get into the content for today. Let's start off by taking a look at the overview of Casper Economics, more specifically where they start talking about the macro economy, just to give you some foundation before we break things down a bit. Our token economics are different from those of digital gold tokens like Bitcoin designed to be scarce. Our tokens are minted from a fixed starting basis, which is accounted for by tokens distributed to Genesis validators, employees, community members, and health for future distributions. The total supply of tokens grows at a fixed annual percentage rate from the basis. The inflationary nature of our macroeconomics has two significant advantages over enforced scarcity. Inflation incentivizes token holders to stake or delegate their tokens, a behavior we explicitly support with our delegation feature. Additionally, because Casper is a general purpose comp computing platform, it is essential to supply tokens to support actual economic activity on the platform and discourage hoarding tokens in expectation of speculative gain. I am almost 100% certain that that last sentence discourages many people. But this applies basically to any utility chain, Algo, HBAR, XTC. If there's no usage and everyone is holding, there's no real value there. Sure, price might go up some, but eventually it's going to be a race to who sells first. If successful, we will still have to wait and see what kind of utility Casper can secure. Then we can see the true value of the token. Now, it's evident by the inflationary design here that they are looking for long term sustainable growth. According to Techopedia, tokenomics, derived from the word token and economics, is a study of the supply, demand, distribution, and valuation of cryptocurrencies. 
In essence, it refers to the economic model and the structure of a blockchain. And it encompasses various aspects of how these tokens or uh, these digital assets within that blockchain are created, distributed, used, and value. Some of these aspects include token distribution, supply and issuance, use case slash utility, token burning, incentive slash economic model, and ecosystem development, just to name a few. There are three main components that people usually look at when they're looking at token economics, and that is dealing with supply, with the first being circulating supply, which is a number of tokens that are liquid and can move freely within the market. This includes peer-to-peer -peer exchanges, anything that is not locked up in a contract somewhere or staked. Next is the total supply, which is the total amount of coins in existence right now. Lastly, there is max supply, which is an approximation of the maximum amount of coins that will ever exist in the lifetime of that cryptocurrency. If you're wondering why is it an approximation and not definitive? Well, that's because some blockchains uh, burn tokens with every transaction, and this will definitely affect that actual number of max uh, supply. At the time of this recording, Casper's circulating supply is 11 billion 278 million 597,392 but in reality is actually a lot less because currently it states here that there is 74.6 being staked to the network of the total supply and staking incentivizes users to earn what is currently right now 10.72 APY on their Casper token. Now to keep the math simple, let's just say that it's 75% that is actually staked. That means 25% is circulating freely among exchanges and wallets. So doing the math, 25% of the total supply, which is 11 uh, billion, 969 million, as you can see right down here, that gives us a total of 2,992,337,050 Casper tokens. Now you might ask, well, won't people eventually just unstake to sell and therefore increase the total circulating supply? Yes, but there are many validators and stakeholders that I believe are in this project long term and will continue to stake and earn those rewards. We have this post here by Kevin Cage uh, regarding the APY. If total stake bonded fell to 50%, the staking APY would increase to roughly 16%, in my opinion, attracting more users for those rewards. If total stake bonded grew to 90%, the staking APY would decrease to 8.8%, which is still a lot better than many blockchains out there. And again, more locked up uh, Casper means a lower circulating supply. So win-win in my opinion. Now let's take a look at the issuance of tokens. If you go over to any crypto aggregator like CoinMarketCap or CoinGecko, I am currently on CoinMarketCap and you see that there is no max supply here for uh, Casper. This is because Casper is a proof of stake network with an 8% inflation rate, meaning each year the total supply increases by 8%. So therefore the supply is infinitely growing each year. This is how new tokens are introduced into the market. And this is perhaps the most unpleasant piece of data to most when it comes to the tokenomics. However, just keep in mind that Casper's total supply is a lot less than many other top layer one blockchains out there and will remain that way for a long time, even though it has a 8% inflation. Good post here by Kevin Cage. Assuming that the annual uh, inflation rate stays at 8%, he goes and calculates the math for the total supply of Casper per year. And let's just quickly jump over to what he highlights in 2032, the supply will be roughly 22.9 billion tokens. So that's literally 10 years, about 10 years from now. And Casper will still have a smaller total supply than XRP, HBAR, ADA, Doge, and XLM today. Again, that's despite the 8% inflation. It's also very important to note that all their public and private sell tokens have been unlocked. There are no more unvesting periods or unlocking periods that you will typically find in other blockchains. One thing I want to point out as you do your research is you might see that in October of 2022, 
the circulating supply of Casper being reported jumped from 6 billion to about 10.4 billion. And that was due to an update on the reporting methodology uh, behind the circulating supply. So it's very important to note that no, this update did not increase or in any other way impact the total supply of tokens. I'll leave this in the description down below if you want to get all the details. Or you can check out this video right up here. So let's take a look at the ICO distribution. This is coming directly from support.casperlabs.io here. By the way, if you want to get more details on the Casper ICO, I suggest you check out this video right up here. That covers the rounds, the lockup periods, and it kind of hopefully helps dispel some of the FUD, fear, uncertainty, and doubt regarding these sales. We see the distribution here. Casper Labs holding uh, accounts for about 10%. The team and advisors make up 14%. The public sales accounted for about 17%. The nonprofit arm of Casper, which is the association, holds 12.6%. The two private validator sales accounted for about 30%, and the remaining 16% went to developer incentives. As mentioned before, all private and public token sales have been unlocked, so there's really no point in going over all of these uh, vesting periods. But I'll leave this down in the description in case you want to check it out. Now let's jump into the use case slash utility of the tokenomics. Casper is a utility token that can be used for staking to secure the network but its primary function or utility is as a uh, gas credit for computation on the network. Every computation that runs on the public blockchain from a simple transfer to a mint to a contract deploy will require gas that is rate limited and priced in order to ensure security against spam attacks and to pay for those limited resources. I won't sit here and provide you a list of all the use cases that will require, potentially require, the CSPR as a gas token, because then this video would be extremely long. So as you do your research, ask yourself if you think the use cases or potential use cases on Casper will place a high enough demand on the usage of the Casper token. Now, per Renal Manahar, the CEO of Casper Labs, he stated that one enterprise client alone can bring more volume to the Casper network than the entire Ethereum network. That's in this interview right up here. If you haven't checked that out, definitely worth taking a look. Next up, we have token burning, which is the process of permanently removing tokens from circulation in order to reduce the total supply. Now this is done by sending tokens to a wallet address that cannot be used for any transactions other than receiving the coins. Some blockchains burn a portion of their uh, tokens per transaction, such as the XRP ledger. Currently, there is no burn mechanism in place for a Casper, but that does not mean it can't be instituted. There isn't a max supply. Casper doesn't function like Bitcoin. It functions more like Ethereum. With respects to burning token, this mm -hmm. is really up to the community, right? If the community wants to propose a new tokenomic model they certainly can propose a new tokenomic model to the casper association of the validators and it'll be implemented it isn't up to casper labs or myself furthermore to implement any such thing um, at this time there is no plans to burn token and the reason for that is we want there to be enough supply of token for the utility of the network by enterprises in fact a proposal from the validators and a vote from the community could also change the inflation rate However, the reality is that the association currently still holds the reins of the Casper network and dictates sort of its direction. But in my discussion with Piotr Zubecki of the association, which you can catch right up here, he states that the goal is for the validators and the community to eventually govern the network. So to wrap things up, as I think this video is already getting a little too long, let's just quickly recap. Casper has no max supply and its supply increases by 8% each year. The current total supply is roughly 11.96 billion with 75% of the supply or roughly 8.92 billion staked. Essentially all tokens are already unlocked and in circulation. It will take roughly 10 years for the total supply of Casper to double. And even then it will still have less supply than many other blockchains like HBAR, ADA, XLM currently have today. So some questions to kind of just consider is is the 8% inflation 
something that you are comfortable with? Do you think the economic model incentivizes users to continue staking for the long term? Do you see the number of developers or developments of projects on Casper warranting such a high token amount? Casper is targeting the enterprise cycle, which is very slow. So in terms of time, does Casper make sense for your investment thesis? I, th I personally think Casper is solidly building. Do I agree with every aspect of their tokenomics? Heck no. In fact, I wish the initial, initial supply was a lot less, although I don't mind the 8% inflation. Again, if we had started with a lower supply. I think the way that they structured this was that the team planned this with high usage in mind. Not a short-term two-year mindset after launch, but I'm talking about years down the line. They're talking about being here long-term, sustainable. That's what they're building. They are very long-term long -term oriented. In fact, I recall it in an interview with the CEO that he stated they anticipate that the public chain will be at full capacity sometime between 2027 and 2028, which is not too far off, but only time will tell. But this is enough out of me. If you're still watching, you truly are a pioneer in this space. If you're new to the channel and you found value in the work that I do, please consider liking and subscribing. Don't forget to follow me on X at the X Frontier. I appreciate every single one of you. And as always, pioneers, nothing ventured, nothing gained. This is the way.